In this video, I'm going to talk about R32 refrigerant. Why I'm talking about R32 is because in my previous video, I was discussing R454B and a lot of questions and comments centered around R32. So now we're going to talk about R32 refrigerant, which is used by a variety of companies throughout the world. And I'm going to be going to the Daikin or Daikin website, however it's said, to read about R32 because they are one of the main users of the R32 refrigerant. Just for some background, R32 and R454B are replacements for R410A. You're going to see a lot more of these refrigerants in units where you would have seen 410A in the past. I'm here on the Daikin website, or Daikin, Daikin or Daikin here, and it says R32, the most balanced refrigerant. And it says, what's R32? Well, according to Daikin, R32 is the most balanced refrigerant in terms of environmental impact, energy efficiency, safety, and cost effectiveness. Of course, this is coming from the company themselves, but R32 to me is a nice medium ground. And I'll explain why that is in just a minute. I'll go ahead and show you a graph here that they have that kind of indicates the GWP of a variety of refrigerants. GWP is global warming potential. Just think of it as a measurement that is used to see how environmentally friendly a refrigerant is. The lower the number, the better. As you can see on this graph, R410A is 2090, 2090. R22 was 1810, and R32 on this graph is 675. That also shows CO2, which is a natural refrigerant, is one. That's why a lot of people want to switch over to CO2. But we're going to be talking about R32. We talked about R454B, and R454B is actually less than R32 as far as GWP. I'm now on an MSDS sheet, which is a safety data sheet from Airgas. That's the company that puts this sheet out. And this is for, as you see in section one identification, difluoromethane, which is R32. If you go down to section two, hazards identification, you can see classification of the substance or mixture, flammable gases. R32 is an A2L refrigerant, just like R454B. If you look at section three, composition and information on ingredients, if you go to other means of identification, you'll see a more recognizable term for R32, you may know it as Freon 32, Genitron 32. As technicians, you may see trade names on refrigerants that are very similar to the R number, ASHRAE number, R32, Genitron 32, Freon 32. The most important thing, as far as I'm concerned, about R32 as compared to these other refrigerants that we've been discussing is that it's difluoromethane, and that is 100% of its composition. It is a single component refrigerant. It doesn't have glide. It doesn't fractionate, meaning there's not multiple component refrigerants inside of this refrigerant that will boil at different temperatures and cause leaks to occur at different rates between the different component refrigerants. So that is an excellent thing. I like to think of things like a technician would. I don't think of things like the EPA. I don't think of things like uh, trainers and teachers. I think of what I would like to see in the field. And single component is something I'd like to see in the field because there's a couple of worries you immediately get rid of. The fractionation, like I was talking about, which is refrigerant separating and boiling off at different temperatures. That's glide. And it just causes more issues. Now, R454B has a lower GWP. And by combining the R32 that's in R454B, now that contains R32. So you may ask yourself, why then will we not just use R32? Well, by adding the HFO refrigerant in with the R32, which comprises R454B, they lower the GWP. So environmentally, it's better as far as GWP than R32. If I look at it personally, I think that, hey, they're both pretty good as far as GWP. And my first concern is how technicians will fare using it, how easy it will be to use in the field. And to me, R32 would be easier to use than R454B. As we investigate these things further, I'll comment more whether or not I stick with that opinion or it changes over time. Both of the refrigerants that I've been talking about are A2Ls. This is the safety group information for refrigerants. This is the different classifications. It goes from no flame propagation to high flammability from A1 to A3. 
they created this A2L category for these mildly flammable refrigerants, which is where these fall. There's also lower toxicity and then higher toxicity. If it's lower, it'll be an A. If it's higher, it'll be a B. We don't typically work in residential, commercial with higher toxicity. That would be something like ammonia, and we don't typically get into that. I hope this creates an understanding of R32 refrigerant for you. I want you to take the time to please like the video if you enjoyed it and comment below. Lead the discussion further, point me in a direction you'd like to go, and we'll continue to explore this topic. And as always, I will see you on the next one. Best practices mean doing the right thing.